Hey guys, and welcome to my reaction to the finale of House of the Dragon. Okay. Oh my god. There, I, I mean, it's going down. I feel like it's going down in this finale here today. I feel like, you know, I don't know if we're actually going to see, like, Rhaenyra find out about everything that's been going on over over in King's Landing over there, but it I feel like it is about to go down and House of the Messy is is in true finale form going to get messier, I would bet. Um I would bet very much on that for sure. Uh I'm really, really excited to get into this. I am also a little bit nervous, you know, there's a lot of characters that I love to follow. Um, there are a lot of characters I love to hate and a lot of characters that I love to love, you know what I mean? Um, and a lot of them are in the middle. Uh, but I'm very nervous that once this starts going and everything gets going a little bit, then um, there's gonna be some casualties. So I'm bracing myself for this finale. Maybe it won't be that bad, but we're gonna see. Let's get into it. Think. It can't be all of the tides. Grandson was the greatest sailor who ever lived. I get green sick before the ship even leaves the harbor. Oh. Four and ten. Same as you are now. I wasn't ready to be queen of the Seven Kingdoms. But it was my duty. I'm not like you. In what way, sweet boy? Not so perfect. Oh my god, well, what a compliment. Love that. Princess Rhaenys has just arrived on Dragonback. She urgently requests an audience with you and Prince David. Uh, very urgently. Shit has been going down, sweetie. Okay, a war has started and you don't even know about it yet. I'm just kidding. Maybe not exactly that, but you know what I mean. Might we hope for news of Lord Corliss' recovery? Viserys is dead. Oh boy. Oh boy. Aegon has been crowned as his successor. <clears throat> Well, just come out and say it. How long ago? The day passed, perhaps two. I was made a prisoner in my quarters while the Queen made her preparations. Ceres has been slain. The High Septon crowned Egon in the Dragon Pit. I witnessed it myself. Okay, just something's going on with Rhaenyra. So that the masses would see him as their rightful king. That whore of a queen murdered my brother and stole his throne. And Whoa! Wow. A war is like to be fought over this treachery, to be sure. There, there will be a war. But that war is not mine to begin. That's also a fair point. You should leave Dragonstone at once. She's like, I don't really feel like casting the first blow in this war. Oh my god, what? Oh come on, are we? Are you kidding me? With the birth scenes in this show of like, is she gonna miscarry? Is that what's going on? Coming. Oh. Okay, okay. I did. I forgot how far along she was. Her term is far from complete. This should not be happening. Shit! Is That's what I was worried about. If the Greens attack now, it will be by stealth, not directly. We don't have enough men to surround the island, but we can make ourselves appear stronger than they are. Damon. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Your grandsire, King Viserys, has passed. Viserys? The Greens have repudiated the succession and claimed the Iron Throne. Wow, still the business, even with all this. Egon has been crowned king. What is to be done about it? Nothing yet. Where is Damon? Yeah, we need to know. plan. Also, yeah, we need to, to make sure that Damon's not going to do anything rash. Whatever claim remains to me, you are now its heir. Naught is to be done but by my command. There we go. We just need to talk, everybody together, come up with a plan. Okay? Oh, oh baby girl, oh, you're strong. You're okay. You're okay. This morning, the sea snake's fever is broken and he has left even for. Where is he sailing? That much is unclear, my prince. Do you want to speak to the mason, my prince? Damon! Mother has decreed no action be taken while she's in bed. Damn, damn. Okay, okay, you stand up. Summon Sir Stefan. Our King's Guard are needed on the dragon. Come with me. Amen. Meeting of 
nobility. Do you recall who King Viserys named as his heir before his death? Princess Rhaenyra. So I'm presenting you with a choice. just breaking because you know what she probably needs to rest and that's not going to happen because <sighs> my whole heart Damon you need to go check on Renera. I know you okay 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 he is okay sorry I, <laughs> I didn't mean to <laughs> get on his case I mean no harm, brothers. I swear to war the queen. I shall guard her secrets. Obey her commands. We have no friends among the Lannisters. Tyler has served the hand too long to turn against him. Pray to give my blunders, Your Grace, but talk of men is moot. Your cause owns a power that has not been seen in this world since the days of old Valyria. Dragons. Sure. Damon, none of our dragons have been to war. There are also unclaimed dragons. Sea Smoke still resides on Drithmar. Vermithor and Silverwing dwell on the Dragon Mount. Here, at Harrow Hall, we cut off the west, surround King's Landing with the dragons, and we could have every greenhead mounted on spikes before the fucking moon turns. Your Grace. All right. Shift to sides offshore. Well. Well, won't this be fun? And here we are again. Didn't we do a very similar situation in episode two? She's like, you were saying. Princess Rhaenyra. I'm Queen Rhaenyra now. And you all are traitors to the realm. Acknowledge Aegon as king and swear obeisance before the Iron Throne. In exchange, his grace will confirm your possession of Dragonstone. Finally, the king in his good grace will pardon any knight or lord who conspired against his ascent. I would rather feed my sons to the dragons than have them carry shields and cups for your drunken usurper, cunt of a king. Oh, okay. Edmund Targaryen sits the Iron Throne. Stark, Tully and Baratheon all swore to me. 
when King Viserys named me his heir. Stale oaths will not put you on the Iron Throne, Princess. The succession chains really, the day your uh -huh. father sired a son. Grand Maester. Is that the page that she tore? Queen Alison has not forgotten the love you once had for each other. No blood need be spilled. The realm can carry on in peace. King's Landing will have my answer on the morrow. and Damon have very different personalities strategically. And I think if this continues, we might see it's an easy thing for a man to be a dragon slayer. Benefits and the dragons can kill dragons mishaps and have. When dragons flew to war, everything burned. Mm. I do not wish to rule over a kingdom of ash and bone. Well, the enemy have declared war. What are you going to do about it? Play the room. Oh, we're gonna have a talk. Does the promise of war excite you? I cannot bend the knee to the high towers. They stole your birthright. If you could take the iron, you know my oath reaches beyond our personal ambitions. A song of ice and fire. What? The coming war against the darkness in the north, the conqueror's dream. Sarah shared it with me when he came to me. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 what the fuck? My brother, Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. Get it off. I never told you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Fucking hell with the, what, what the hell? Okay, sweetie. You are no man. I needed you. Baylor and Raina needed you, and you abandoned us for more adventure at sea. As has always been your way. Your brother is also dead. In his haste to bury you and claim your seat, he stood before the king and denounced Lamor's sons as illegitimate. Damon took his head for it. This ambition has always been a Valarian weakness. <laughs> Retire to high tide to be content with our grandchildren. Oh my goodness. Jace, Luke, you know. and Jock are claimants to the throne. Rhaenyra is the only one who's demonstrated restraint. Yeah, I mean, no matter the, the motivations for that, I appreciate that she's... A lot of the time! And his wife, the Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Okay, you better make your entrance. Look at you. I do appreciate that she is showing some restraint. Where is Damon? There are other concerns which demanded the Prince's attention. She's putting him in a very long- Your declared time. allies? Both Aaron and Baratheon share blood with my house, but all of them swore oaths to me. As did House Hightower. If I remember. As did you, Lord Corliss. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She hit it back at you. You have the full support of our fleet and house. Your grace. You honor me, Lord Corliss. Taking caution does not mean standing fast. I wish to know who my allies are before I send them to war. Hey. I don't, I don't hate it. The narrow sea is ours. If we further seal the gullet, we can cut off all seaborne travel and trade to King's Landing. I should take nearly some patrol of the gullet myself. It's good to have some Where good allies. We should bear those mysteries. Dragons can fly faster than ravens, and then more convincing. Okay. Send us. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. 
we must remind these lords of the oaths they swore and the cost of breaking them. Okay. Well, okay, people. I'm in the music. It's making me feel things. What is Damon up to? I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about you at the present moment. Sweet bye. If you take this errand, you go as messengers, not as warriors. Mm -hmm. You must take no part in any fighting. You'll be honored to host a prince of the realm. Hmm. And this dragon. I love, oh, I love how she's giving them kind of political Expect strategy tips. Welcome. Yes, ma'am. Your grace. Go to it then. There's something very beautiful about the fact that she wants them to be messengers and not warriors. I am a little nervous, especially given that this is the finale, that that might be, that might not work in everybody's favor. Just because you aren't coming in like a warrior doesn't mean somebody else won't come in like a warrior, you know what I mean? So, I guess that's the point I was trying to make. There's been a lot of good intentioned people in the Game of Thrones universe that have not fared very well. Messy Wessy. No! Oh my god. So, the Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Correct, I'm right there, Queen. Luboros. I brought you a show strength here, here, kid. Queen. Yet earlier this day, I received an envoy from the king. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how that <laughs> happens. <laughs> You did not have time to read that whole thing. King Aegon at least came with an offer. My swords and banners for a marriage pact. Go home, pup. And tell your mother that the Lord of Storm's End is not some dog that she can whistle up at me to set against her foes. Oh, wow! I shall take your answer to the Queen, my lord. My lord strong. Oh, really, with the strong, with the strong, I mean... Did you really think? I want you to put out your eye. It's payment for mine. Wow! One will serve. I plan to make a gift of it to my mother. Ooh. Not here! Give me your eye! Or I will take it, boss! The boy came as an envoy. I'll not have blood shed beneath my roof. Take Prince Rucellus back to his dragon. Now! Wow! That's a cool looking situation going on now. Look at you. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, okay. I don't know. Well, I mean, I know the dragon's looking ahead. I just, I'm, I'm nervous. <gasps> Holy fuck balls! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! 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 Not the laughing! Not the laughing! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what's getting 
No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Shit. Well, that's that, right? I mean... I'm not- I don't know about restraint now. gonna get messier and as much as Renera tried I think throughout this episode to maybe try to find a solution for both motivations of what her father told her but also protecting people and being a queen you know um, that is worthy of the people's respect. And there was a lot of this that I really respected a lot of the way that she was approaching the situation. Um, God, there's so many things that I want to talk about, but I think at the end of the day, you know, she, she mentioned, you know, when Damon was like, we have all of these dragons, they just have three, I think. And that, and, you know, she's like, but dragons, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, I mean, there's just carnage everywhere. And I know she was probably more thinking of maybe the civilians on the ground on the, I mean, even within the, in the last episode, within just a, the brief moment of, you know, Rainice coming up from the, and I, you know, I just, I mean, surely there were civilians killed there, and, and, and I think Renera was, was thinking about not just the cost of war, because war is, you know, there, there will be death, there will be casualties, there will be all of that, but bringing in dragons as the main, I like that there is a, a show of restraint on her end with that. I really appreciate that. And it's not just, okay, let's burn them all. And then we get to, um, you know, the ending where, you know, this is House of the Dragon. Dragons. Can you control them? And how well can you control them? And what is that? I mean, the fact that it was just such a, a representation of the, the situation getting out of hand, right? Um, and I'll, 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 I'll talk about all of that in a second, but I do want to just talk about Renera specifically. And that now, you know, there's, she's got this, this, What will she do next? Will she show as much restraint? I assume possibly not. You know, she says if there's going to be a war, I'm not going to be casting the, the first blow. And I also thought it was really interesting. And I didn't really think about it um, in that regard in the last episode where we're looking at Renice and, and there's a lot of different reasons why she could have burnt them all then and there but her simple words at the kind of the beginning of this episode where she's just like I'm not gonna start this shit I mean you can you can make nuances of who's starting it right like I'm not saying that that would be the end all be all deciding factor of who started shit you know there, there there's 
let's not do that. But she's like, that's a pretty big statement. Though, you know, if you could burn the entire other side, because a lot of them were there, a good portion of them were there, you know, um, that kind of puts the, puts the kibosh on that for sure. But okay. But I loved that she said that because I was like, you know, it's a fair point. And also I think she, she wanted to know where exactly they were going to land. Talk to Corliss. Can I say, can I say that I love that Lord Corliss made it? And I was thinking that the whole time with all of this, this, this craziness with his brother and who's the rightful heir and stuff like that, which was craziness. And I was like, it's going to be hilarious if Lord Corliss makes it. And he did. But I will say these things and these fights about who's going to inherit what and everything, it honestly should be when the people are still alive because, you know, once they die, then it's just all madness, as we can say. But, um, you know, oh my god. And the thing was that it was decided, you guys know what I mean. The madness, craziness. Um, all right. Okay. Oh my god. I, I There's just so many things to talk about. What's interesting, and I did not like that scene where Damon grabbed Rhaenyra and I'm, I'm, I am going to talk about both of their, I think Damon, even as much as he was probably prepped for a very long time, I think most people should have been prepped for a very long time that Viserys was going to not make it. Sometimes even if you do anticipate something like that, it is still shocking and really difficult for him to deal with. When he was, he just went straight into, um, how are we going to attack? How are we going to handle this situation when Renera is literally miscarrying and calling out for his name? I'm not saying that there's anything right with what he's doing, but I think he just he just tunnel visioned there because he couldn't deal with everything else that was going on. Um, and I think he definitely felt hurt by the fact that there maybe was some information that he wasn't given. And uh, did, was he ever really thought of as Viserys's heir in his mind? You know, I think... There's a lot of um, Damon's actions, in my opinion, and maybe I'm reading it wrong. I do know that a lot of a lot of people who know a bit more of the story probably have a better idea of some of these people's actions or their personalities. But the way that I've seen it is that there is a desperate need to prove to Viserys that he doesn't need him, and but you do need his approval. You know, like there's this this big need within Damon that is like, I don't need you. I don't need this. I don't, you know, I'm going to do, do my own thing. And, and I think there's immense love for his brother. Um, and I think it's complicated what is expected of him, what is, you know, um, and I think one of the reasons that he he was so drawn to Renera specifically as she kind of had a very similar mentality through, you know, what is expected of her and what she should do uh, versus what should, you know, she wants to do and everything like that. I'm going off on a tangent. I, I apologize. Um, but I love the fact that we have throughout the season seen Damon sort of have this, you know, pent up need to prove to Viserys that he doesn't need him, but in turn kind of needs him. You know what I mean? And I think there's love there. I think there's care there. We see that a little bit at the, at the end of, you know, the, the episode, but I, I think he lost himself a bit in this episode. 
I think he lost. I think he's just filled with a lot of rage and it's just, I didn't like it. It's not excusable in my mind to, to, to really to grab her like that. I think it's, uh, I should say it's an overreaction is, is an understatement for me. Um, and there's this idea that, you know, I don't know. I mean, okay, <laughs> let's say that aside, because I, I do want to talk about a couple of other things in regards to going forward with Renera and Damon. Now, um, I have stated, and, and I still agree, that I really do appreciate Renera trying to show restraint. Um, I also think um, it's important for her to show restraint. Um, in the sense of let's not just go all crazy and impulsive and start killing people. Let's not strike super immediately if there was a possibility to avoid it. Now, whether or not the other side would, would really adhere to that is, is, you know, that's taking a gamble. What I loved about that is as much as I absolutely adored the fact that somebody, you know, was saying, let's, let's do, you know, let's not go full force into this. There is also an element in that I do agree with on, on Damon's side, where he's like, they are, they have, you know, usurped the throat. They are, they have taken Aegon and stuck his ass on your throne, you have to do a show of force to say, hey, this does not fly. Period. So it was really interesting, those scenes, except for the, you know, the scene that made me feel uncomfortable, but like the other bits of the scene, I actually really enjoyed their dynamic. And I think, you know, if this does just bleed into a full out war, which I think at this point is pretty much inevitable, um, but, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see them work together on this one side because, and obviously this is, this is also dependent on, on how Rhaenyra, um, possibly changes after, after what just happened. But, um, you know, there's, there is a mentality of Damon's impulsive nature helping him in the past. And guess guess who's actually fought in shit before? Damon, Corliss, you know what I mean? Like, the, 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 there is something that comes from experience that I think should be taken into account. Um, and I think also, you know, Renera, um, her views and what she was trying to do in this episode was really great as well. I loved that dynamic on this um you know, w between these two specifically. I wish that the episode focused a little bit more on that. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, is that none of these characters are perfect and that's just, that's just how it goes. I think there's going to be plenty of times where I'm going to watch this show and a character that I have enjoyed is going to do something that I don't appreciate. I mean, it's, it's happening in Game of Thrones. It's going to happen here. That's kind of how it goes, right? Um, so, uh, I really did want to touch on that and that I kind of like the idea that, you know, there, and, and there's a bit of, uh, it could really benefit Renera and Damon to be two people who have very different strategies with this stuff, um, or it could be to their detriment, um, surely as well. So, um, I'm very interested to see what happens with that going forward um okay oh my god there i i swear uh okay otto showing up when he showed up i was just like does it have to be him like i understand i I don't mean to, I, it, 
but it's pretty clear what his intentions are and he is not interested in in peace. He is not interested in trying to to figure out a solution. Um and you know, I mean, did Allison really even send that page or was it was it just like he found the pa I don't know how he would have known about the page if did you I don't maybe she told him once. I don't know. I don't know. It is too much speculation there. But it's just like of course, he might, you know, just be using what he can use to sort of make his own argument, make his own claim, make his own whatever. It's just, uh, I wish it was Allison talking to Renera. That's all I want to say about that. Not Aegon. I know, I know he's, he's king. Ooh, I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not about, you know, I don't have faith in the decisions that Aegon's going to be making and call me judgmental, okay? Okay. And that does not mean that, you know, I, there's, there's not some characters over on the green side that I don't, that I don't live for. Hello, Bug Princess, Bug Queen? I get, is she Bug Queen? Dear. It's all very confusing, I mean, because first of all, you have to think about, like, who do you actually recognize as king or queen or whatever, but you, you know what I mean. We love her. We love her. We live. Um, but, uh, it, it, it's, you know, as I said in the last reaction, it was like, who would I think would be, who do I think would be a better ruler, Aegon or Rhaenyra? It's like, <laughs> I mean. Come on, people. Um, but <laughs> putting them up, and I gotta choose. You know what I mean? But I, it, it's, ugh, my God. But just seeing High Tower or uh, Auto walk up there, I was like, here we fucking go again. This is like a repeat of the second episode too. And Renera coming in, handling shit. I mean, you know, we love, we love. But it's just, and the animosity between him and Damon. There's just a lot there too. There's a lot of animosity within a lot of these characters. Um. But I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. That whole thing was just making me feel super uncomfortable. And I'm, I am curious to see how I believe, now I don't really know these Starks as well as like the Starks that we know from Game of Thrones and stuff. I believe that the Starks will stick with Rhaenyra. And this is just my assumption on not knowing these people at all. Uh, the, not really. Um, but they... The, the very honorable people, right? And it's it's always been, I feel like, said in Game of Thrones that they're very honorable people and have always been. So I assume, probably, maybe, they're going to stick um, to their promise. Um, the Baratheon situation was really interesting. Um, of a, you know... Um, and there was this brilliant moment between, uh, you know, or the, just the whole scene with Lou Saracen and, and Aemond, where Aemond, you know, is really doing this intimidation factor, but also, I mean, listen, somebody slice my eye, I'd, I'd you know, be salty too, sure. Um, but there was definitely a element of, Aemond knowing he could taunt a bit. Does that make sense? Like, he's got this sort of, um, first of all, when he took off that eye patch, stunning, honestly. Honestly, kind of stunning. Honestly, you're kind of killing the look, okay? Okay, some shit went down at the end, not so great but you're killing the look. So, I mean, applause for that, I guess. 
but I, there, there is definitely this, you know, and I was nervous that throughout this scene, you know, that he's, he's basically like, I'm going to fucking get you. How much did he really want to get him? Surely not in, in what happened, I assume. He looked pretty horrified there at the end. All I'm going to say about that. You know, he's got that, like, serial killer look. I mean that with all meaning of respect. Because <laughs> it terrifies me. But he's got that stare down really good with one eye. Um, but here's the thing. And that's the thing that I was just talking about. Oh, I'm, I'm, listen, we're going to talk through this, guys. You know, as much as Eamon, I think, has been fighting, prepping, willing to do what needs to be done, I believe that for sure, and and probably um, going in to any sort of situation like that within the, the Baratheon Hall, or whatever you call it, um, with confidence, a little more confidence, right? Um, you know... Has he really seen combat, war, any of that shit before? Not really, you know, not in comparison to, to, to some people in this show, right? That, I mean, he was horrified, I think. That's how I interpreted it at the end. And it's this, you know, this moment of like, I, I mean... I just started a war. Maybe not, I, or my dragon just started a war, or I did. Yeah, my, I mean, you can, guys can argue in the comment section of who you want to blame. I just, I really, I'm tired, I'm tired of it. But uh, I just, you know, it's this, this horrified look of, fuck. that's it, there's no turning back now. And what is the reception going to be uh, uh, back at home? I would assume Allison won't be happy. Otto might be happy, but maybe not, depending on what strategies he was trying to put into place. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see that. Um, and I'm a little worried that, like, the next thing we're going to see is a time jump. And not just the immediate fallout of this, but... And maybe we will, I don't know, but I, w I would love to see a little bit of the immediate fallout because I mean, it's absolutely going to be messy, but I find it, I would find it very fascinating. Um, and there is just this moment of, it was like two dragons kind of Going at, I don't want to say going at it. It was short lived, but I mean, you know what I mean. And there just happened to be two writers on top. Like, it really, I it just. Whoo! Body. And it's a lesson he's gonna learn. For sure. If you're gonna go down, I mean, and let's be real of what, you know, he was, he was. Chasing him and laughing and taunting and whatever. And I, again, up to you. Argue in the comments if you think he's justified in that or not or whatever. You do you. But if you're going to do that, riding the biggest fucking dragon. I believe it's the biggest, right? The biggest fucking dragon. You better be prepared for what's going to happen if... It actually, you know, if a death actually occurs from that. Oh my god. Oh, and it scared me too. First of all, that shot of just like him like flying and then like the big, the big shadow, that like freaked me out. But then at the end where it, you know, came out of nowhere. Oh. She really did. She really did. Oh, okay. 
Vagar's a she, right? I believe that's true, but you can correct me on that. Oh my god, guys. I, I mean, that just, that just blew me away, that final bit. And as I keep saying, I know I sound like a fucking broken record, but it's just, it's really interesting how we really have authentically gotten here. And one of the reasons that I, you know, I stand pretty firm in my stance of like, I'm not just going to sit here and take a side. You know, there's a, there is a lot of the fandom that really wants me to declare team black or team green, but you see, you see, you see, I represent both colors because I'm just, I'm tired. I'm, I'm just exhausted from it all. But the thing is, is that I, what I care about in this show, I'm not really looking at it through the lens of like a Super Bowl and uh, you got to root for one side and my team's going to win because I think that they're all, but they might all lose at the end. Okay. We might all be just a big bunch of losers. House of the losers. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't know. I don't know about winning when people are losing their kids, when people are, lo listen, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. But what I care about is the nuance of these characters the complexity and how brilliantly we've kind of gotten to the point of all of this madness occurring very organically in my opinion and sure you don't agree with somebody's decision or you're angry about somebody something that somebody did or whatever man we're literally i think starting this next season going into war and I totally am like, well, I guess we, I guess we got here. I guess we got here and I guess this is what it is. So everybody buckle up, you know? Ugh. It's just, oh my God. And uh, I guess I want to end this with saying um, how bad I feel for Lucerus and Specifically, you know, when he was walking into the, the hall with the, um, Boris, I believe, Baratheon. I, well, what I was saying in my reaction, I was like, you better, you, you, just, you see, you see Aemond right there. You better walk with confidence and say what you mean and say, you know, refer to your mom as queen and like whatever, because Aemond is not going to budge. He's got that stare, you know what I mean? He's got that stare. Um, so if you wanna, the, the end, he did his best. He did, I really do think that he tried his best to honor his mother in that moment. And even he knew kind of going into, to, to, to going into the sky that, that there is a very big chance. He saw that the, the dragon was gone, right? Um, I think that that's what that meant, but like, so he, he kind of is trying to, to talk to his dragon a little bit and say like, Hey, listen, we gotta be, we gotta be smart here. And you know, at the end of the day, you can't con necessarily control what a dragon does when they're coming up against another dragon and there's animosity there tension. You know what I mean? Fighting. Aggression. Because the thing is, you know, what we've seen in Game of Thrones is a little bit different, right? Um, only, okay, barring the, with what happened with the Night King and all of that, you know, there was only one person with dragons. It wasn't like there was other, you know, and the dragons all kind of grew up together. And you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on the logistics of dragons and how they feel and everything like that. So don't ask me, but there, there's a familiarity there. There's a brotherhood there or whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but there wasn't a lot of like, you know, 
dragon versus dragon too much again barring what happened with the Ned King and all that um so it's a little bit of a different game here right and how much you know Amond as much as because we know that Vagar right is is an older dragon and a you know, Damon is in her mind of her life. I believe it's a she. I do apologize if I'm misgendering. Um, but uh, the uh, her whole life, she's a, you know, amon has been her writer for probably not a giant portion of it. For him, it was a good portion of his life, right? Or how old was he when he sort of? I mean, a decent amount, right? But it, it's a different perspective from her end, right? So it's a little, you know, what is... I don't know. I just think that that's an interesting point to be made. You know, if you have a dragon that it, may, it might... It, I don't know. I don't know the logistics. I know that so many of you know the logistics better than me, so I don't try to like act like I know everything. But isn't there like probably a bit of like if if you're your dragon and you kind of have this relationship since the dragon was young, it might be a little bit more connected? I don't know. Um you guys can let me know if you if you know kind of specifics about that or if it's just different. I mean I, there are certain people in the world that are a lot more loyal than, than other people in the world. So maybe it's the same with dragons. Maybe there's, you know, some dragons, uh, you know, march to their own drum. And some dragons are definitely a little bit more, like, in tune with their rider and, and all of that. But I found that really interesting. That there was a very good focus on that in this episode. That means, like you know, the example of what you've seen with Daenerys and her dragons in Game of Thrones may not be exactly the examples that we're portraying here today. On this day. I feel awful for Rhaenyra. In one episode, she, you know, she miscarried and then lost a son. And I just hate that the kind of the season's ending on that because I wish that we could, we could see a little bit more of, of how everybody's taking this news on both sides, black and green. Goodness me. And I did like that the last two um, episodes, it doesn't mean that there wasn't anybody, but I, I felt like the, the last episode did a bit of the inner workings of, of what was going on within, you know, that side of things. And this was more focused on, on Renera and, and what she was going through and everything like that. And I really liked kind of the deep dive into the characters with that stuff. So, okay. I think that's all I wanted to say. I'm sure that there's something I'm missing, but I really tried to hit all of the points of what I wanted to talk about. Really, really interesting. Anyway, um, for the most part, I do want to say this. For the most part, you guys have been wonderful. And I have enjoyed this show. And you guys have been lovely. Yes, there is a... Uh, a little bit, a little fraction of the fandom that's a little aggressive with, with me, um, in in the sense of of me not necessarily taking sides and just wanting to watch the story and just wanting to appreciate the characters. Sue me, I know, but um, you know, uh, other than that, you guys have been really really sweet uh, this season and have been really really supportive, and I really appreciate that. You guys have been beyond wonderful. And um, I can't wait for season two, whenever it happens to show up. All right, uh, if you would like to support me on Patreon or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But if not, I'm just happy that you are here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.